Today we're going to talk to you about a couple of new features that are very important within the Azure Data Factory Mapping Data Flow Preview. Uh, I'm going to focus on some new data sets that are available to you now and how you use those in the source and the sync transformations. Now these new features to Mapping Data Flow that we're creating for Data Factory are part of the preview that are going to light up in the ADF V2 factories. So previously, if you're part of the preview for Data Flows, you had to create a separate factory type for previews. And let me show you that here in the portal, so you would use this type down here. Uh, that's no longer the case. You, we have uh, moved all these features into the whitelisted accounts within the V2 factory. So if you're not already part of the preview, I'll put in the links in the comments on the video uh, on YouTube here, where you can go to sign up to become part of the preview. But then you just create the factories here in V2 and you'll get these new features. So let's talk about the data sets first. So here I am in my source transformation, and when you click new, you're going to see the SQL data sets as before, but instead of the blob store and the ADLS data sets, you'll see the delimited text and parquet data, uh, data set types. Now, these are very similar to what you had with blob and ADLS, except for that we've separated the connectivity, essentially blob or ADLS or you know whatever it may be, from the information about the, the uh, file type. So we, we found during the preview of Dataflow that we needed a little bit more um, insights. We need some more introspection of those files. We need to collect different information such as partitioning and other sort of format information about those files. And so we, we felt the best way to do this is to have these different data sets now for delimited text and parquet. All right, so for this demo, I'm going to use both. I'm going to start with the delimited text data set, and I have one created here, which is my uh, taxi demo. So this is the demo that comes with data flows, and I'm using the CSV file for the taxi trip information. Let's go ahead and edit that. And so a lot of this will look very familiar to you if you're using other ADF data sets. And all the other data sets within ADF are still available to you. Um, to get those into Dataflow, you would stage those into one of these formats. Our preferred format is Parquet. You would use Copy Activity to take any of the other AD connectors we have, land your data into um, the lake, you know, in, in Azure, either Blob or ADLS, as Parquet, and then we can consume it here in Dataflow. The connection information against that link service, which could be blob or it could be ADLS. And then I'm pointing to my CSV file here. The other fields should be familiar to you from the blob store uh, data set type. The schema is all string because this is a text file, and so we don't have the richness of the metadata uh, about it. But when you're back in the source, what you will see is that here under the projection screen, so the projection tab now in source will take what you found, what you have in your data set, put it here into source. We'll take it from your data set. And then here is where, in this case, you could um, auto-detect the data types. Because what we can do now is we can go ahead and we can uh, introspect and infer the type from looking at the fields in the data within your data set. So once this comes back, you will have, there it is, you will have the data types for each of those fields that are previously just strings from a text file. That's good. Now, within uh, back on the source settings and then uh, source updates, you will also see a schema drift, which was there before. So schema drift will allow all the fields to pass through so that uh, your data flows won't break when the source file changes, adds fields, things of that nature. We've added validate schema so that you can click this and you can say that if the schema that's coming in does not match your projection in your schema, then fail the data flow. So you may want to be a little bit more strict about that. On the settings, now you have the ability to search for specific files or wildcards within uh, that path. So your data set, you can override that file that I'm pointing to here, and you can see every file that has sales, um, you know, star .csv in it, for example. Pick up all those files and then transform those. And what you want to do is when you have more than one file, you'll want to pick a column within your data set to store the file that you are currently processing. So you could call that field whatever you like, and then the string text value of that file that's being processed will come into that field for you into your data set. List of files is essentially a file set where you can list all the files you want to process, and, and Dataflow will automatically iterate through each of those for you. And then after completion, I have this defaulted to no action. This is what I'll use for the demo. I'm not going to use the wildcards or the um, completion um, actions, I'll just keep it to no action. But if you like, you can have us delete the source file when the data flow is complete, or you can move it. When you move it, you could just move that to another folder within your uh, lake or your blob store, and I could say move that, you know, something like archive. But in this case, I'm not going to do that for the demo.
Now, when I'm in debug mode here, I can do my data preview and I can look at all of my uh, data in preview mode and not have any of those file actions take place. All those file actions will only occur when you run and execute your data flow from the pipeline part of Data Factory, both the pipeline debug and the pipeline execution. That's the only time that those will actually occur. So you don't have to worry about deleting your files here while testing in preview. I think that's pretty much it for the source. Now let's move on to what I have here, a real simple sort of data flow for this demo. I do have a data type conversion derived column in here. So if you um, are not able to infer, so if you do a projection in a um, detect data type and these types are not coming through, maybe they're all strings, you can always modify them manually here. Even after this was um, done, I can still modify these manually if I didn't like what um, ADF came up with. Another way to do that is to to data type conversions in a drive column, very common thing that we see customers doing. So I'm just changing two integer and two dates, very simple. And then I'm going to land that data here into um, a file that a, a folder within my blob. So there's going to be parquet output. So let's take a look at this data set. This data set is again, going to be very similar to what you will see within um, the um, blob store today in Data Factory, but this is specific to Parquet. So where am I storing my Parquet file? And then uh, what am I going to have for a schema? So schema, the richness of the schema is a real nice advantage of the Parquet uh, data type as well as the compression capabilities. However, I am storing this in a folder because this is output. So I, I'm not writing to any specific file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, when I run my data flows, put all the output files in this folder and make them Parquet files. So I'm converting CSV to Parquet here and creating some rich data types and schema around my data. I'm schematizing it with this data flow. Now I'm going to say here within my um, settings on my um, on my sync for my data flow is I'm going to say clear the folder. This checkbox will delete the files from that folder before dropping the files in there. And I'm going to say I want to just output everything to a single file. This is a very small simple demo so I don't need the partitioning of files and data from Spark. So I'm just going to say, give me one file and let's call it this. If I don't set that, I'm going to get partition files from Spark partitioning. It's going to have part 0001, so on and so forth. And that may not be what I'm looking for. So this is the file that I want. And that's it. So everything looks good. My preview data looks there. I have everything set. I'm converting. I'm creating Parquet from CSV. Now, Let's go ahead over into the pipeline view, and this is where you will then be able to execute this. Now, this is the new version of Dataflow within the V2 data factory, so it does not use link services. It uses the Azure IR, and you can choose the different kinds of compute types and size of cluster you want to run. I'm not going to dive into that here. I'll, I'll record another video where I'll, I'll touch on that. But what I do want to show you then is that when you uh, run this and you debug it, you will then be able to see the output in terms of what does ADF do with those files. So now I can go over to my blob store and the output, if you remember, oops, that's not the right one, is output. If you remember, I put it into the parquet folder and there is my my.parquet. Now I can't actually see this here in the viewer because this is a parquet um, file, it's not a text file. But what I can do is I can download this because I do have the parquet file viewer on my uh, when on my PC, which I believe is something that um, is a free download, so you can get that for Windows. And now I should be able to open this up in the Parquet viewer, and I will see that my CSV data is now in Parquet format. So there you go. Thanks for watching.